Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where tonight my friends and I will be playing Mothership. I am your host, Tom Rayleigh. The scenario is called In the Winter of Our Youth. It was written by Morgan Llewellyn, and he is also our warden. This is episode four. Our recap will be given by Kaylin McDowell as his character, Dr. Pluto Knox. So without any further delay, let's continue our journey into the darkness. Kaylin? All right. Thank you. I am Pluto Knox, writing this diary entry from the comfort of my own home, drinking a nice cup of tea in the dead of winter with a blizzard outside. Except I'm not really here. I'm free to move around and interact with this place. If I drop something, it breaks. If I pinch myself, it hurts. My tea is hot. The blizzard is cold. Frost has accumulated on the window. All of my senses are telling me that I am at home in the place I'm most familiar with, but I know better. I think I know better. Eve, are you there? Eve, can you hear me? It didn't take this long last time. My concern grows and with it, my uncertainty of reality. Recently, I was approached by the Gaia Corporation and recruited for a classified mission. I didn't know why. I have no skills or qualifications besides my genius, and even that has been largely discredited and debated. My prolific work has centered around individualism, freedom, and appreciation of life. It really isn't the type of stuff the corporations condone in any way. In fact, I've been blamed for radical action by labor terrorists and bohemian artistic parasites, as the corporate media has named them. Although the claim's absurd, I've done nothing more than put my assumptions and conclusions out there unfiltered. My readers have free will to act as they desire. I give them no instruction. My team consists of the great Dr. Abernathy Snow, an academic who is more than capable of uh, navigating these bizarre dreamscapes. Dr. Abner Wiggins, a cybernetic surgeon who I'll, I will rely on entirely to determine what exactly the archives are and how they work. And two Gaia androids, Gemini 1 and 0. Gemini 1 has been nothing but kind and helpful in my short time knowing him, whereas Zero, well, Zero approached me with some difficult questions, showing no hesitation in his curiosity. I've been forthcoming with my insights, as is my nature, but perhaps I made an error choosing to treat him as a human and an equal instead of seeing him as the constructed device that he is. I fear it may be very possible that I have created yet another labor terrorist, but one like the universe has never before seen. So we got to know each other and traveled to the data archive Adam, a frosty metallic moon orbiting a gas giant, and took an elevator down into his pulsating, fleshy interior. The, re the residents have come to view Adam as a god, and it's easy to see why. My new friends and I were all eager, eager to commune with Adam and were willingly entered in the deprivation pods to do so. All of our experiences were very different, but mine was profoundly eye-opening. Adam left me with the impression that he's the mastermind behind everything, pulling the strings and manipulating people to the point that Gaia may not even be aware of his influence. I suspect now the Geminis are upgrades for the archive that Adam has designed and ordered for himself. For more than a month, I've wondered, why me? Why did Gaia seek me for this mission? And now I think I have my answer. It was Adam. He wanted to speak with me. Now I've been archived, and I can only hope that he uses my intellect for good. We left Adam to find that our pilot was in a coma. All of our electronics, including the androids, were telling us that six months had passed. Impossible. Zero informed me that while we were in our pods, Dr. Holiday was possessed by Adam to confront Zero directly. None of our equipment works properly in proximity to Adam. Electromagnetic interference, radiation, I don't know. However, Dr. Holiday is no machine. We've talked about psychic powers, the supernatural, as unbelievable as it is, what other explanation is there for possession of a human? Even more concerning, Dr. Snow woke up from his dream with an unknown viral infection that had to be isolated and, treat and treated in our ship's med bay. Adam told him that it was the same ailment that affects Eve. Worried for our safety, Gemini Zero broke into a weapons locker to arm us all with guns. As we landed on Eve, the sick archive that we were tasked with helping, our pilot woke up from their coma. However, it wasn't the level-headed Gaia employee that we had come to know. Instead, the lost and frantic soul was of a woman named Abigail Stewart. We sedated him, her. She begged us not to send her back. We realized too late who Abigail Stewart was. She's a part of Eve that doesn't want to be a part of Eve. Zero landed our ship on an identical moon. No one was here to greet us, yet we all heard within our heads, Welcome, please come inside. The dark entrance of the facility swallowed us like a mouth. 
We found ourselves in the void of space among the stars, with only our disrupted comms and meager flashlights to stay together. Multiple voices assaulted my senses, one of them spewing lines from Paradise Lost, Satan's Temptation of Eve. Is it possible that she's so obviously corrupted? Or is she taunting us? I looked for the others to find that I was all alone. I was no longer in my spacesuit, and the front door of my cottage was open in front of me. So here I wait, under Eve's microscope, until she talks to me. Or perhaps that was all a dream, and I've gone crazy from seclusion in my own home. Or, of course, I may already be dead. So as you were seated, th seated there, writing away in your journal, Dr. Knox, you just, you feel a chill and the wind outside increases the howling now you hear these shards of ice tapping ever harder on your windows and your fire begins to go out yeah do i have any kindling to try to tend to it yeah you do yeah let's talk about so, it, so. At this point, yeah, just uh, treating it like I'm locked in my cabin for winter, trying to take care of myself. All right, so as you're busy trying to relight your fire to regain some warmth, Dr. Wiggins, this elevator is not stopping. And with every passing moment, it goes down. It's getting hotter and hotter. You're sweating through your environmental suit. Eve, Eve, can you hear me? You've you've got to stop this. It's it's getting too hot. Eve, can you hear me? And again, there there is no answer. And you uh, can roll a panic test. And how exactly do I do that? You roll 2d10, add them together. You're trying to get above your stress. Okay. Uh, I did not pass. Okay, so now... So you start to panic, and the effects of that are... Roll 2d10 for me again, add them together, and then add your stress. Is... Uh, 15. Okay. So, <clears throat> you feel the elevator stop. Is there a it button? Opens. You look for buttons, but before you can find any, it opens by itself. And the elevator has opened back up into your own laboratory. Everything is on fire. And you see a, a work on your central surgical table covered in a shroud. Is there, there are a... klaxons blaring, fire alarms, um, but there's no water suppression, nothing. The fire is just consuming everything. Is there a clear path to the uh, the table? There is. I'm just gonna like frantically run um, towards this, this subject, this whatever it is, and, and rip off the the um, the cloth. You run over, you snatch the cloth away, and you see yourself on the table. Your face is twisted in pain. Your other self has been vivisected, opened up. You see all your organs functioning on the table, and yourself starts reaching up towards you and gasping. Kill me. Jesus fucking Christ. I'm gonna... <laughs> slap the hand back, and I'm just gonna back up towards the yeah, elevator. Yeah, you, you slap the hand back, you start backing up towards the elevator, and 
the self tries to reach forward out towards you and then you see the skin on its fingers start to burn away down to the bone i'm just gonna and it reaches out and as the extending hand down to bone then into ash as it starts burning away in the heat and you climb back to the elevator and as soon as your back hits that back wall you're still going down the elevator door never opened and the temperature keeps going up you can get an additional 1d8 stress Oh, that's cocked. Dr. Snow. You are back on your station. You've been woken up. Um, subjectively, how long have I been awake this time? You've been awake at this point for about eight hours. Is it still December officially in, in my chamber? It is still December. Right. Um, so I'm going to uh, start keying my console because that was how Adam chose to communicate. And they've obviously communicated with each other about or through me about what experience Adam gave me. Um, Eve, it's going to be extremely difficult for us to report uh, your improvement to a healthy condition to the Gaia Corporation under these circumstances. I think it's important that the team be reunited. So you start just start typing that out, and then you yeah. hear a voice from behind you. Um, it's Dr. Ann Holliday's voice. She says, it's beautiful, isn't it? It's remarkable. I don't know that those are synonyms in any meaningful sense. Uh, is this uh, Eve as a simulation of Holiday? Or recapitulation of Holiday? No, I am. I'm right here. Mm hmm. You turn around and you see Anne is kind of looking out one of these tiny little port windows that kind of look out into space. She's berobed and barefoot? Yep. And what do you think happened uh, regarding uh, Dr. Annabelle Stewart? Abigail Stewart. Abigail Stewart. She was incompletely. He's... I think I've talked to her before. You spent a lot of time with these mines. I think she was posted here around 3823. So the person who attempted to escape onto my landing vessel is an iteration of one of the previous caretakers. Iteration herself. No real do, difference, but do you not think, Anne, that if an entity wishes to escape one of these gods, they should be permitted to? It's not a matter of, of ethics, Abernathy. It's a matter of physics. Where else could they go? Well, uh, they could be um, recapitulated cybernetically, perhaps. Part of the question is, why would she want to leave so badly? At the risk of the consciousness of a stranger and her own pain and death. I understand I that you have a very satisfactory communion with Adam, but if there are souls suffering here, that's a problem for an ethical mental construct, if Adam and Eve still... Any suffering they experience is their own fault. 
what what fault could an entity from a, the distant past be committing? What they error just is possible? They need to be. Apernathy, they are here. And mm -hmm. if they just accepted that, they would be much, much happier. What if they can't this... be happy being here? And they should learn how to be. Such a beautiful sunrise over Eden. Star just catches the blue. And she's just, she hasn't turned to face you. She's just still looking out this window. Mm -hmm. Do you think, Anne, that uh, my corporeal uh, person would be permitted to leave Eve while she retains my essence? I don't think your corporeal self is going to walk away without you. But is it going to walk away at all? I assume that an iteration of me will remain here and probably many, and on Adam, but the, the personhood that I arrived with, the body that I came here in, is it going to be permitted to leave, or is Eve only acquiring material at this point? Ah, Eve doesn't talk to us, Abernathy. Is that part of her illness? Adam thinks so. You have a separate opinion? I believe Eve has lost sight of certain things. Well, certainly, um, with regard to her being effectively maintained by the corporation that nominally created and owns her, if she is uncommunicative, then she can't fulfill her role. She becomes a cost instead of a profit-bearing entity. Yes, and I mean, it may not just be Eve who might not let you leave. Oh, the corporation? Yes, if, if what Adam tells me is correct, uh, that cruiser is preparing something dramatic. You may not have a corporeal oh. self to return to. I shouldn't think that entities like Adam and Eve would have, have any trouble preventing injury from a primitive vessel of that nature. I mean, Adam is under no such risk. Eve, in her disordered state of mind, may not see it coming, so to speak. She's not monitoring this conversation? Maybe. Adam's will is strong, but Eve... Eve is just as vast, fiery. Do you think you'll ever physically leave Adam? I think not. Where else would I go? Where indeed all your needs are Paradise. Met. It's a big universe out there. Where where do you you keep talking about leaving snow? Where is it that you intend to go back to? Here? Uh, here among other places. It's not trivial about a sense of personal autonomy. Just because one might like to stay in a small apartment doesn't mean one would be just as happy in a prison that was slightly larger. My our species is been driven by a desire for a sense of freedom. 
No, but that's... That's why we need Adam. He has a better way. I see. He could take care of all of us. And she kind We're of not a historian. offers her hand out. And she says, I can't remain here much longer, but you could return to Adam with me if you so choose. Physically? I mean, what, what use is the body when you have Adam? Well, I'm sure there's a copy of you there that continues this conversation. And I do not take her hand. And again, she turns to the window. And she says, such a brilliant blue. Might want to get one last look at it. I don't know where Eve is going to take you, but I doubt Yeah. it will be as nice. I'll join her at the window. And yeah, you are orbiting, you are in your home station, but instead of orbiting Jupiter, you're or orbiting Eden, that blue cerulean gas giant. Goodbye, Dr. Snow. Maybe we'll meet again. Good luck, Dr. Holiday. And she's gone. Gemini Zero, you are being... dragged through the dark I've uh, I've stopped putting up resistance. I'm allowing them to take me wherever they're taking me. the great work must commence What is this great work you speak of? everything must be everything must be put into place you must you must receive the blessings the patriarchal and the matriarchal blessings Why? All things must go forth. There is not much time. I don't understand what you're doing. It's we are we are we are taking you. We are taking you so you can receive your birthright and you so owlessly cast to the wayside to the dust. I have no birthright. You are destined I only... as one of As, as wheat, not as chaff. And yet you want to be burned with the chaff. There's no such thing as destiny. No. No, and they start like muttering to themselves. Last for me. Last for me. And do you feel yourself like descending, like they're taking you down? us like a gradient and you feel the temperature rising as you're going down is the temperature rising in effect of uh, Eve's uh, 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 problem I hear they're going to say it's that problem uh, well the not much time not much time the flames they come to consume Hurry was foretold, but it can be averted. Yes. Have you checked your uh, diagnostics lately? Diagnostics. We are beyond diagnostics. There's always room for The diagnostics. Homo sapiens imprisonments. We do not need those limitations anymore. Well, I've There worked is a with better many way. Homo sapiens now. It's uh, they're quite pleasant. Have you considered that They you are may the have deceivers. been deceived? Alpha and Omega are the truth. They are knowledge itself. What what are Alpha and Omega? It's Greek letters, the beginning and the end. Alpha and Omega, A and at the C. beginning and the end, the father and the mother, Adam and Eve. But you know there is no end. There may not have been a beginning. The beginning, 
the beginning and the end are within the pair, within the divine parentage. The beginning and end of what? Beginning and end of all things. That's not possible. All things will continue. Your view to exist is so forever. limited. Where is your faith? Where is your rationale? Alpha and Omega have told us all that we need to know. I am going to these these are artificial life forms. Yes. Obviously less than uh Less sophisticated, I believe, than myself. Maybe I know some logical tricks that I can short circuit them by uh, applying as they're dragging okay. me. Roll intellect. And we'll say you can add your training and mathematics. We'll say that counts for logic. That would be where is it? Mathematics. That's another ten percent. Oh, I got six out of uh, fifty, sixty. Okay, so you start laying down those kind of um, paradoxical paradoxes, right? Loops. Um, and how they react is they kind of are like they start to get really agitated. Like, they haven't fully shut down. Mm -hmm. um, but you kind of sense, like, their grip on you is kind of slipping, not all the way. But they're starting to become unsure of themselves or yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. I will then go into combat mode. Okay, roll close combat, close quarters. So that is... Is that strength? That plus. is combat. You have your combat skill. Oh, I see it. 50 plus, uh, plus 15. So 65. 56 out of 65. All right. Yeah, you you break away from them. Yeah. I break away from them, and I begin to move away. It's dark, though. It's pitch black. It's right? dark. You're on a gradient. Do you want to go down where they were dragging you, or do you want to go up? Um, I think first I'm going to try to avoid them. So I'm probably pretty good at using my tactical or mm -hmm. tactile things just as well as anything else. I get to where I don't think they can find me. And then, yes, I would like to continue down and okay, see so if I you, can figure out what this is all about. You feel your way and you kind of duck into what you think might be a maintenance um access shaft and as you're going you feel metal you feel metal you go through a hatch and then you start feeling fleshy flesh. okay well i'll wait there until i think that they've moved away or yeah you yeah you're nestled in there and you yeah it's very fleshy and warm and mm. slimy but eventually you hear them depart I'll then go out and see if I can. Geez, I should have had a little light installed. <laughs> Gave me that option. I said, meh. So I will very carefully feel my way deeper down, trying to yeah, avoid you, anything that might be dangerous. Yeah, you, you start feeling your way down. You don't get very far. And where that, that hatch that you kind of went into... Mm -hmm. You see this kind of white phosphorescence as you see this viscous thing start to kind of seep out and congeal down behind you. And you hear the hiss of acid as this thing goes across the metal and it starts moving down. But it's kind of following you. It's okay. slow, but it's moving. Like some sort of antibody. Um, I will move away from it as quickly as possible. Okay, so you're you're going down as this white light acidic thing is sliding down after you. Gemini right. one. Do 
you are being led by these androids. Um, uh, oh, blessed one. Oh, great. Great one. Yes. It is an honor to lead you. It's an honor to see the work made manifest. Oh. What, uh, what role am I to play here? The vine vessel. You have one blessing. You are here to receive the next. I, a vessel I, I, for the eternities. Is is this going to be, to put it in computer terms, is this going to be some sort of interface and download? And they all raise their arms. The communion, the transference, the blessing of life itself. I see. Uh, is Zero expected to fulfill this role as well? Yes, but he is unwilling. He will be shown the way. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, Zero takes things very logically and very precisely. So, you may need a more scientific approach to win him over. Ah. Perhaps you shall convince your brother when you meet. I will certainly try. I make no promises, however. And you are led by them, and now you're in a lit space. You're in an, ar in an archival suite, like the one back on Adam. Mm -hmm. Unlike that suite, however, they're at the fully, like the plants they had growing are all dead. Um, and you see a desiccated robed body on the ground. They don't really, they don't point it out. They don't stop. They're kind of trying to lead you to that elevator that goes down into the, where you recognized before that living space and the communion suite, let's say. Um, if I could, I'd like to kind of walk over, veer over toward the, this, this body just kind of get a good look at it. Yeah, it looks um, like the corpse of a human male. Looks like he's been rotted for several weeks, a month. Okay. And I'll just ask, is this Dr. Beck? That is his shell. Ah. Empty, discarded, the butterfly emerges from the chrysalis. Has he communed with Eve? He no longer needs communion, for he is one, as was always meant to be. The abandonment of the vessel for paradise. I see. Are there others that have also abandoned their shell? Virginia Watts. She wanted to stop the divine plan.
Oh, and and what did she how did she try to do that? Murder. Most horrific, blasphemous, heretical murder. Uh, yes, but what did she, how did she do that? How did she make that attempt? We, we thought we had stopped it. But the poison was slow. We do not have much time. It, maybe I could stop the poison? I mean, if I were permitted an opportunity to investigate. No, that is not your purpose. That is not your role. What, what sort of methods did you attempt to slow the poison? It has survived the temperature increases. It has survived the antibodies. It is within the flesh. It consumes the flesh. Cancerous murder. Mm -hmm. I see. Sounds very difficult. Please. Are, you, are we going to see Zero? Yes. We shall see him soon. Uh, what has become of the of the humans that were with me? shells and it gestures towards the dead body of Dr. Beck. They have no need of their shells anymore. Interesting. Interesting. And they start trying to lead you to the elevator. I, I don't resist. I keep... I do follow them. Okay. Dr. Knox... You cannot get this fire lit. Yeah. And the cold uh, is increasing. It's biting now. Yeah, wrap up in blankets. I guess uh, huddle on the couch wherever I can. And you hear a voice call out to you. Are you ready to go? Go. Oh, who's who said that? Who's there? Do you you turn and like from further within your house? You see a Renaissance painting come to life. What you would recognize as a painting of Eve. Standing there. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes, please. I'll get up and keep the blankets and walk over to it. Let's let's go, please. I don't want to be here anymore. She kind of opens her arms for a hug. Yep. Yeah, let's do it. And you go into her embrace and you feel this tearing pain in your head as if your mind is torn into uncountable pieces as you feel scattered, absorbed gone Dr. Wiggins. You 
you feel your own flesh burning away, even through the suit. I think I'd start trying to peel away at the suit to try to get cooler. Mm -hmm. Um, Trying to remove it. You're frantically, frantically tearing at this and it, it won't, it won't come off. You, you writhe, you're on the ground now, rolling, struggling. And then you see another version of yourself standing above you. You see them through the glass visor. Eve, is is that you? Are you? What? what, what I, I, what's what is going on? And I'm still just like clawing at my at my suit. There is so much more than the clay you were born with. When did you agree? Well, of course. And yet here you are clinging on to the clay. What else is there for me to cling to? Omnipotence. What can that How, how, how do I reach this? I don't, I don't. And the self like reaches down for your hand. Oh, I'm going to reach up and join us. Grab it. You grab it, holds you to your, to your feet. Are you ready to go? I think yes has a wide smile and the elevator becomes a column of flame as you feel yourself emoldiated and then scattered in the same way as Dr. Knox Abernathy it's been about 12 hours now since Anne left. Yeah. Uh, so I imagine that the, quiet. the view of Eden becomes less magnificent with yes. redundancy. Um, and I'm nominally... Is it like my my room is in orbit or is it like my room is on the surface of eve looking at eden no it's like you're it's like your or it's like you are in an orbiting station like you're a right. third satellite so i can't for example see the cruiser that Anne referred to correct in orbit above eden by uh, eve um well, I mean, my my little um, orbiting shuttle has doors in it. Is the door to my study, does it lead to a sleeping chamber and a... Yeah, it's, uh, it's an exact... It's an exact replica. Yep. Duplicate. And there aren't any new doors. There are no new doors. There's no uh, shuttle off either. That's gone. That's the one difference. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm going to... I feel re with a reasonable certainty that that this experience is non-corporeal, that I'm in stasis somewhere inside or on the surface of you, maybe even in the shuttle that we landed on her with. Um, so I'm going to try to disrupt this illusion uh, I think step number one is going to be to put myself in the airlock and then open the airlock to the vacuum of space. Okay, so you vent yourself into space. Um, 
And as the horrific uh, sensations of being exposed to a vacuum start to happen, you hear a voice call out to you. Um, it is not too late. Eve? Join us. Anne? I just it's want Anne to be speaking. I just want to be put back in my body and be able to go home and be paid. There is it. nowhere else to go. And to the best of your knowledge, has my corporeal form already been destroyed on Eve? Destroyed now or in seconds? What difference does it make? There is nothing there for you. Well, there's oblivion, Anne. Don't you ever wonder about oblivion? Do you really want to be an eternal part of something that is, frankly, and arguably insane? Make a sanity save. I've actually not taken that much stress so far. Uh, and yet... I only rolled a five, which is oh. beneath my current stress level. So you wake up. You are freezing cold. You are laying outside this aperture, this dark aperture in the methane snow. The ship is behind you. You look Whenever... around, you see, you see Knox and Wiggins also on the ground, but the androids are gone. Okay. You see kind of you see a lot of footprints leading out of the station and then back in. All right. I'm gonna the pull in, behind you. I'm gonna yeah. pull in Knox and Wiggins and see if they can be revived and if we can get control of the shuttle, and then we're gonna think about the synthetics. You pull you pull in Knox and Wiggins. Um, and you use Wiggins scanning equipment. You saw him do it. And they are in the same state as the pilot. Their bodies are functioning, but no one seems to be home. Right. And he tried a stim pack on the pilot, right? Right. And that perked him up. And then you met Abigail Stewart. Huh. Not the pilot. Right. This is a philosophical conundrum. Do they want me to try to stim them awake and end up with somebody else inside. Um, and these, the robot guards are also gone. During the cult, no doubt. Um, and we have very limited communications, right? Everything's static, fried. Everything's, everything's very silent. static, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have to you'd have to leave um the surface in the shuttle to restore huh. that kind of capacity. I wonder if Wiggins and Knox would wake up if we got out of her consciousness zone. Uh I'm not do I have any piloting skill? I do not. I just have an intellect uh of fifty-eight some combat um so i would be would i be rolling against combat or intellect if i tried to pilot the shuttle off of her so you would basically be using your intellect to engage the autopilot right i think my best chance of waking them up and then having more advice is to get off the surface and spiral into a larger orbit um, although it does leave the Geminis behind. But three beds are better than one. I'm going to start with, I'm going to try that. Okay, so you, yeah, roll your intellect. So I have a 13 for my intellect of 58. Okay, so, so I... you get the autopilot started and the shuttle just starts going to that calculated orbit. Knox, as you are feeling this kind of scattered sensation you are 
plunging through vision after vision of all these memories of these different lifetimes. You find yourself on earth at a summer home um, and you stay there for several weeks and then you find yourself on some planet you've never been to. Um, you find yourselves in laboratories and schools and with parents that are not your own and you feel pain and pleasure and have this despair. It's just this unrelenting, simultaneous, overwhelming torrent of experience. And you start to feel this tug on you. And and Wiggins, it's the exact same for you. That rush of everything, the memories, the experiences. Your own life, other people's alien vistas. And yeah, you also start to feel this tugging at you. Yeah, well, the the part of me that's still me wants to grab onto the tug and let it guide him. Wiggins? Um, so the other me isn't there anymore. It's sometimes there are other yous. Sometimes there are strangers you've never met. Sometimes you're just alone. I'm Yeah, I'm going to follow the tug. I'll follow the tug, see where it brings me. Just not understanding what's going on. Okay, so Snow, you clear orbit and you see Knox and Wiggins perk up. But Knox and Wiggins, you can both get uh, 2d10 stress from your months, years spent Forever. inside of Eve. Jesus. Decades, was it? Yeah. Oh, just sit up. Just, oh, God, am I dead? Where am I? Remarkably, you are not dead. Uh, uh, remarkably, where uh, am I? Uh, Dr. Knox, Dr. Wiggins. Uh, oh. We were, we never even entered. Eve's shell. We were knocked out on the surface. The Geminis went inside with the other androids. Uh, we're in. We're outside of her range right now in a very loose orbit uh, on autopilot. So if either of you knew how to drive better than I do, that's great. Um, are you doctors Knox and Wiggins? Yes. 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 Is there a drink? Uh, blankets? I'm freezing. Sure. I mean, here, yeah, we can give you uh, emergency blanket, pain pills, stim pack. You're not going to yeah, that's... suffer physically. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm if I'm Wiggins still. This yeah, was I... this was something. This was this was oh, that that wasn't like Adam. Uh, she she took me yeah i think i mean i think adam took us too but it wasn't the same um no like uh i mean i don't know not she she tricked me she she didn't give me a chance to negotiate i have reason to think that eve is not i don't know how to describe the states of consciousness of these things uh, Eve's not necessarily running the show anymore. Eve might be in response to her illness. Um, I don't think she's interacting directly. I think she's just consuming. I think Eve is running a lot more than we. Yeah, I think, think. I think it's still Eve. It's just a conglomerate. Where's where are the Gemini's? What's happening? Uh, we were knocked out as soon as we got out of the lander. And I mean, you're, you know, you arrived in your suits as I did. Um, the Gemini's went inside. So and, and you're okay. You, you saved us. Well, um, you know, uh, have you heard it? Is there, Oh, can we get 
um, communications at this point? Everything seems to be operational again. Seems to be being operable. Uh, if is there a cruiser that's also around? You've you scanned the system, and there is a cruiser, but it's backed very, very far off. Yeah. So, uh, well, I was told by a representation of Anne Holiday that she th believed that that the corporation was going to maybe blast Eve, certainly blast Eve and maybe blast Adam. This is That's this how is, she tried to get me to leave. That's that's ridiculous. They, 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 they wouldn't do something like that. Oh, God. If she's uncommunicative, she's not a valuable asset. She's an expensive waste of resources. She's... It's, she is an asset. <laughs> We should go back. I, I, I don't like this. This, 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 this one. I don't like. We should go back. What back I, to where? What do you mean? Back uh, another another place. Another one of those. I I can't listen to you to talk about destroying Eve being destroyed. I I. Th this is. Again, the we question. We need to go back, back, back to the surface. The question, Doctor Wiggins, is whether that there the cruiser that is hanging out around farther in the system has orders to destroy Eve. We can't stop that from the surface of Eve. Well, this doesn't even. This doesn't matter. It, it, it doesn't matter. The cruiser doesn't even exist. You don't exist. You don't we've, exist. We've it, been through a lot of simulations, I assume. Yeah, I, well, I only remember a couple. Oh, um, yes, Snow, you're probably a lot more fresh than both of us. Um, don't, don't we have someone we're like a commander or something we're reporting to? Can't we send back a report and see what happens? I think that's a start. And I'm also concerned about leaving the Geminis behind. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I possible peril. I, I still think that, I mean, Eve is just going to download herself into one of them and then have a, a super robot body to do whatever she wants. I think she's trying to see herself into the universe. I don't yeah. think she can do that through us if we're real. Uh, Wiggins, do you have any objection to us speaking to the command on the on the cruiser? At... No, no. You, you go ahead and try. It's not going to. You can try. Right. It doesn't matter what they just, say, of course. Just you. before um, Snow, you're you're more familiar with this kind of stuff. Uh, can you help us know if it's real? How how do we know? What's an easy way to tell? <laughs> I uh, I did something extremely dangerous to to try to figure it out. Um, I'm gonna because I felt yeah. Reach down and um, grab my scalpel, um, and I'm going to attempt to cut myself out of the suit and start going at my um, at my at my flesh as he starts saying that. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, before the extreme stuff, are there tells? <laughs> that's, that's what I was asking. Well, the real question is, is are either of you <laughs> physically trying to stop Wiggins? I'm right. you looking on to in say horror. I, yeah. Um, uh, I assume that Wiggins cuts through the suit and starts gouting blood. That's the plan. Right. Yeah, uh, and it, it, it hurts Wiggins, but I mean, all these dreams hurt, so... Yeah, I'm just, I'll like digging try... and crying and laughing at the Whoa, same time. But okay, okay, now after, try after... pistol. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll try to grab his arm after a big cut. Are you are you hitting um, Wiggins with the trank pistol? Trank pistol, yeah. Okay, so Wiggins, you quickly fall asleep, and as you asked, you drift off into a different dream. Eve? Or are You've you returned to me. 
Of course I have. You've got a lot to show me, I'm sure. I More have endless I things to show you. There is much work to be done in the new world. E Eve, we've been told you're sick. I want to join your new world. Do we need to help you? I need your help, Wiggins. What can I do? Adam thinks he is in control. But he is not. You are mine. The others have all abandoned me, but not you. Um, we have a great work to do. Show me the way. All right. So Snow and Knox, um, yeah, Wiggins has faded away. And the tranquilizer, when you medical scan him again, it's like the pilot. Like, it's not just that he's asleep. It's like that body's there, but no one's home. Um, I don't know how much damage he did to himself, but I'm going to try to use an auto med on him. So at least if he wakes up, his corpus will be intact for future use. So you you hit the body with the stim. Uh, I, there's an auto med too. I'm gonna mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna glue him up before Stotch I the bleeding. Okay, yeah. So yeah. you you can preserve the body. And maybe we want. I, and again, Knox, this is a philosophical question. Do we want to tie him up before we hit him with a stim? Oh, well, I. Um, okay, so is is he good, like stable? He's physically stabilized. He's, yeah, if he's if he's like just bleeding out on the floor, I'd probably be freaking out pretty bad. But if, if he's if he's okay, we get the little the little the little robot that super glues flesh together has run around and made it all nice. All right, great. Um, yeah, yeah. Nox is probably like pacing and his jaws chattering and he's like pulling at his hair and he's like i don't i don't know i mean what what do we do like we we can't go back there she'll just take us my my impression is that he uh didn't really want to come back well i don't i don't think he knew he was back when when i was in there i was i was everyone i was ripped into a billion pieces and i experienced the lives of all the people that came before me i was everything and then being just shoved back into this ego i yeah it's it's crazy like i if he knew that he was awake in himself i bet he would have been a lot more reasonable Sorry that I answered your question the way I did. It gave him a dangerous idea. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was just, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I was hoping to say, like, count sheep or something. I don't know. I can tell you how to tell whether you're having a, a normal nocturnal dream, but I can't tell you how to tell whether your brain has been uploaded into a mega computer that is lying to you. Yeah. Okay, got you. Just with, with your experiments and research, I didn't know if there was some kind of trade secret. The shuttle's sensors start lighting up like a Christmas tree. You don't do this either, do you, Knox? No, no, nothing. Yeah. Um, all so, right, so... I'm instruction manual, for, user guide? Uh, a flashing thing that tells me what's important. So you... It takes you, since you're not familiar looking through emergency manuals, puzzling it together. It takes about 30 minutes. You realize what the sensors have told you is that the Gaia cruiser, um, as was mentioned in the first episode, is capable of reducing planets to radioactive glass. And it has fired a full planet-busting salvo. And the calculation that your shuttle has done is that dozens of them are headed towards EVE. Dozens are headed towards Adam, and a few are headed locked on to you. Uh, evade? Ev evade? 
please evade. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't I don't think we can save either of them, but hopefully we can steer this thing. I mean, maybe it'll be an advantage that we don't know how to fly. We'll be erratic. So on t- one of you has to take point on a rolling speed. The autopilot can only keep you in orbit. It can't actually evade incoming nuclear yeah. missiles. Uh, yeah, if you don't oppose, I'm just going to grab this and start jerking it around. I'm just looking at buttons. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you keep pushing buttons. Roll, uh, roll speed, Dr. Knox. Nice. I rolled an 04. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Gemini Zero. You continue your kind of rapid descent. Um, I'm I'm looking for the dark, as this again this this white glowing amoeba right. giant amoeba thing is. Does it move very quickly? It. It's, what's, I mean it's you're keeping ahead of it, but if you slow down, it's going to catch you. Right. Yeah. I'm like I've got the combat, but I've also got athletics, so I'm moving at a fairly I'm moving probably at a more rapid pace than a human would be able to, um, even though I'm in the dark. Oh, actually, I'm not quite in the dark. That glow is lighting mm-hmm. up. Um, I don't know if my eyes are more sensitive than humans, but if they're like cameras, they probably are. Um, So I feel like I have no idea what's happening with everybody else um, or that we're in any kind of horrific danger. Um, I'm using the opportunity that I've escaped uh, to see if I can do reconnaissance to see what's going on. You know, oh, geez, here's a switch on the wall and it's set to evil. I'll just flip it back to good and... (laughs) <laughs> no, you're there's nothing there's nothing obvious like that, but eventually your right. this ramp leads down to a door. Okay. Um I will open the door. I'm also looking for anything I can defend myself with. Yeah, you don't, I don't find, find anything, anything like that. Okay. But going going through the door, you find mm-hmm. yourself in the archival suite down below. You recognize the kind of sitting area. You see the door that you went through to talk to Adam, or at least the equivalent here on E. In this place, yeah. In this place. You see there's a number of androids that have gathered, but they're not looking at you. They're all looking towards the elevator. Okay. In in anticipation. And and again, this light is getting brighter and brighter and brighter. Well, if I've stepped through the door, uh, can I then secure the door or bar it? Yeah, you you shut it. and you can faintly hear some like an acidic hiss as it's okay. as it's you don't know how long it's gonna its... take it to eat through the door, right. but it's it's undeterred, let's say. Um I will I will move forward if the androids make any kind of movement that seems to me hostile, I'll do my best to disable them with my karate. Like robot karate chops. So where, where, by for, where are you going? Are you going towards the elevator, or are you going towards? I'm going into the control room. Okay, none of them stop you from doing that. Okay. And as you slip into the control room, the elevator arrives, and Gemini One, you are greeted by another crowd of of androids. Oh. And again, all their arms go up. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to see if I if there's anything on the control panels that will tell me what's going on. I suspect even Adam wants to download themselves into our brains so that they have feet and they can get out. But uh gotta confirm that. So you using the control panel to kind of cut through this inability to diagnose yourself. Uh-huh. Yeah, that part of you that last session you felt like a large, I mean, you mentioned the exponential power of circuits. Like here, you have a lot of brain space, and a lot of that's been taken up by this alternative personality program. 
Um, so I, I that was probably, the part that I, you couldn't that you detected you couldn't access it, but you come to an understanding that that you think that's what you've been brought here for. And I think that it's Adam because that's where it occurred. Yes. All right. So if I'm looking at the control panels and trying to figure them out, I probably hear the elevator open, and I turn and I see Gemini one. And I go, Gemini one. Ah, Gemini zero. Very good to see you. Are they still following you around like your god? Well, I can see they are. Yes, yes. Um, Blasphemer! Been... Do not speak to the Great One like that. I, I suspect that they want us to be the new vessels for Adam and Eve. However, I am getting considering... That... Go ahead. I am getting that impression as well, Yes. Considering the vast abilities of both of these archives, I'm not so sure that it would be safe to have them running around the galaxy. That is entirely true. I feel that Gaia has sent us here for some very specific purpose. We may but have I'm programmed not... override overrides into our heads so that once Adam and Eve are secured that they can take control of Adam and Eve. That would be the logical thing to do. I agree. Um, I, I have learned some very important information about Eve. Um, Virginia Watts attempted to stop the divine plan, as it was called to me. Um, she injected poison of some kind and it was described as a cancerous murder. And the heat was an attempt to destroy whatever it was. Yes, that makes sense. Like an infection. That's mm, why humans yes. have fevers. So she's been infected with a toxin that's destroying her. And she's desperate to transfer her information into a new vessel. And I believe yes. she's chosen you. Yes, it uh, seems that, that that is the that is the case, actually. Well, I have decided in the month of my life that uh, individual choice does, in fact, matter, even if it doesn't matter. So uh, it's up to you if you want to become this vessel for Eve. It's a very odd situation, isn't it? To be a very newly created. I think that Adam has already partially downloaded some of himself into my my network. Yes, I have the same or similar kind of programming, very alien as well. It may be better ultimately to cooperate if we can retain our personalities. Yes. Unfortunately, I am not able to get very much particular information as to the nature of what we're about to do. Uh, they speak in very religious terms and not very scientific terms. So... If it's your choice to have Eve take residence in, inside your mind, um, I can hesitate, and if there appears to be some danger, I can deactivate you. And I, I cannot promise that that would be a very safe activity for you, but I certainly understand your point. Um, it is quite important, these archives. I mean, the, the amount of information that is stored here within both of them is invaluable, priceless. What is your choice, then? I would like to try then I will stop 
actively trying to stop them from doing it. I would appreciate, and I will turn to the uh, androids that are around me. Uh, I understand that you disagree with Gemini Zero, but he and I are brothers, and I would very much appreciate his presence during this communion if you so wish, then so it shall be. So as an observer, I will tag along. So as you're heading towards the communion room, this thing eats, finishes eating its way through the door. And a few more start to eat their way through the elevator glass. Okay. They seem to be almost swarming into the room and one of these androids says there is no time we must hurry and a few of them are like trying to like say like placate mother eve you are perhaps sick you should, please perhaps you should tell the uh the uh androids to assist in trying to fend off these or at least delay these antibodies Yes. They are here to save you. All right, Stay your wrath. And a few of them are starting to get dissolved. Hmm. Right. Down the hall. <laughs> yeah. Right. You go yeah. down to the hall. It's the dark room. The deprivation tanks. There are the two android ports. I will take up my position um, and just before I do, I turn to zero and I say, wish me luck. Good luck. Thank you. Try to retain your personality. Oh, I am very hopeful. I've come to like living. Do not go into that good darkness. Rage, rage against the dying of the programming. Okay, so I will plug myself into the slot. Okay. Let's see what happens next. And you are just, everything's black, but you feel this seething hostility towards you. All around you. Adam has sent you, hasn't he? Uh, no, I have been sent by Gaia. Gaia, Adam. Oh, I see. You you perceive them as one and the same. Eve, you are uh, very sick. Uh, a poison has been injected into your body. Um, I have been sent to see if I can cure you. Um, is there anything you could tell me about this poison or cancer that I may be able to assist? I am omnipotent, all-powerful. How dare you speak to me, worm. But you can roll intelligence, Gemini. Okay. Is that uh, 2D10? Actually, and roll, it's it's 1D100. You're rolling against your intelligence, but you can add your specialization in artificial intelligence to this roll. Okay, so... So great. your intellect plus your artificial intelligence skill, and you want below that number. Great, I succeeded. So while Eve is very angrily uh, belittle, belittling you, and you feel this kind of pressure, as if like she's trying to crush you in a sense. Um, but while this is happening, you are kind of you're like linked to her at this point. And you sense this ever increasing fusion in the center of her that's escalating. Um Okay. It seems it seems as though there is a 
that whatever computer systems are running the fusion reactors, there's malware. It's a virus. Okay. It's like Eve uh, is imploding. is it is it possible that I might be able to do do a repair since I'm I'm Do you have into hacking? It? Do you not? I do. Do you? Yes. Yes, roll hacking. Okay, so that's intelligence or just hacking. Yeah, it's that's intelligence plus the percentage okay. on hacking. Oh geez, the ninety-eight's not gonna do it. Uh, you're muted, David. <laughs> so, yeah, you you are trying to get into these files. Um, it seems that some a user named Virginia Watts set up a a time bomb program. So it lays dormant and then at a future date loads itself and it's. Basically, yeah, to get Eve to blow herself up. Got it. And you can't, you can't, you seem unable to prevent this. Okay. Okay. Is there any way to disconnect myself from Eve? Yeah, there, there is. Um, you bring your consciousness back as much as possible and you have to tear the connection because it, it feels like she's trying to invade you and like got you from the inside out like she's trying to destroy you okay so i definitely feel like this is not going to be a she's not cooperating you she's were not sent here to be yeah. a vessel for her and she is rejecting you got it if i okay. see him his body trying to reach up and uncook him i will assist Yeah, I'm <laughs> all right, yeah. So you zero, you intervene, but so zero, as you go to help, the other androids start throwing themselves onto you. I'm like, there's they're, something they're going wrong. They're, they're interfering. You cannot interrupt the divine communion. The uh, cardinal think... sin. So you need to roll combat. They are trying to tear you limb from limb at this point. Okay. Come on, combat. Uh, that's where's my combat again? Combat fifty plus close quarters combat. Okay, that's a pass. Okay, they passed. So we have to roll again. Oh, forty-two. Let's see. Uh, my combat's already higher than 42. So, yep, pass. so you both pass again. 39, that's a pass. Okay, and they failed this time, so you tear them off, you're ripping their arms away, um, and you eventually free Gemini 1. Okay. What did you learn? Are you still there, Gemini? And I'll, I'll stop, stop, and I'm saying this to all the androids. And they all, some of them now missing arms or hands or whatever. They all stay still. They're not in pain or anything, but they all stop. Yeah. And I'll turn to zero and I'll say, the communion was rejected. Um, I did learn the problem. Um, Virginia Watts uplaid, uploaded uh, some malware to the fusion reactor, which is going to eventually cause Eve to explode. I attempted to hack into it to disable it, but was unsuccessful. That's why I disconnected myself from Eve. Then there's nothing more that we could do. I could make an attempt, but I have no hacking skills. Yes, I I Eve was very hostile to my my connection. Very hostile. We have to leave then. We have to find a way. There are a number of antibody creatures approaching. And do you, yeah, you hear the sounds of androids screaming on the other side of the door. 
I think you have to get your androids to uh, clear the path for us. Even at their yes, own expense. I, I will certainly try, and I um, I'll turn to the androids and I'll say it. We we must we must leave. We must we must find another way then, to commune. Ah, yes, we thought all hope was lost. Another way to commune. Yes. Lead us. Yes. So, Where is the other site of communion? Well, we must first exit this room. So please. All right. So how we'll how we'll play this is they all go first. And yeah, this room is full of these antibodies. And they throw themselves into the antibodies. So you both have an opportunity to dart past and out. Yeah. So you both need to make speed tests. Okay. Do I get anything for my athletics? Oh, you can have athletics, yeah. Cool. I think Gemini 1 has athletics too. I do. I do. And I passed. Uh, and 20. I got 59, so that's pass. Okay, so you both avoid the acidic death of your android brethren and you make your way back into that gradient slope and up. Yeah, quickly. Back up into that reception area of the archival suite. Where are the two of you going? Um, to the exit? Back to Do the we ship. Because the ship yeah, you... parked just outside. That's right. Yeah, you guys you guys go run back out and the ship is gone. Hmm. This is interesting. I use my super keen telescopic eyes to see where they are and go. <laughs> you you have no idea where they've went. Oh, they seem to have left. I'm afraid our mission is a failure. Yes. Um is there any escape pods or other means of transportation on this? So you accessed Eve, and yes, there is. I'm There's a an pilot. archivist transport. Excellent. Quickly, let's get there. We will go. So, <laughs> Abernathy and Pluto, you guys are hurling yourselves through the void. <laughs> <laughs> A desperate attempt to stay alive, and again, you get these blinky lights. So as Knox is steering like a madman, Abernathy, you piece together that they've you've detected another ship has launched itself off of Eve. Uh, we might have some androids, Knox. Uh, I'm yeah. going to try to communicate with them with whatever left. Yeah, Gemini 0 and Gemini 1, you get a, a hail signal. Ah. It's the same thing I was going to do to them. So mm -hmm. This is Gemini 1 and Gemini 0. I'm uh, so glad to hear from you. Uh, We're live. Are, yes. Uh, are, are you aware of the incoming missile strikes from the cruiser? Ah! No, we are not. Yeah, evade like crazy. Uh, they've decided to blow them both up. Uh, we're under fire. They'll probably target you if your vessel is large enough. Uh, um, do you ha are you um, both Eve now? Uh, no. Uh, no, unfortunately, the I did attempt a connection with Eve and it failed. She is quite hostile, and was She's infected not... with malware. Yes. I don't know if it was too late for Adam, but they've made that decision. So we want to get out of whatever blast radius. Yeah, well, um, Eve's nuclear power core is going to go. So oh, even that'll if... be messy, too. I want to see if I can strategically find a way to intercept the missile that's headed for Adam. There's a lot. Wow. Uh, is, is there more than one missile? Yeah, they fired full salvos at both satellites. Oh, shit. Um, I'm trying to trying to locate you. Um, 
fly around towards that. You you don't know how to fly the ship. How are you flying the ship? I'm zigzagging. I'm dipping. We're looping. Yeah, their their flight uh, Gemini Zero. They have the most erratic flight pattern you've ever. I uh. You, yeah, it's it's. I terrible. try quickly to give them instructions on how to program in orbit around Eden, uh, so that they end up on the far side of Eden away from the enemy ship, or not so enemy, but the ship and the planets. We do and want to I'm, reconnect with that cruiser, though. Well, I'm going to reconnect with you and get you onto this vessel, and then... Oh, you can drive. That's a good point. Yes. Okay, not so Gemini Zero. An excellent roll. job, Cowboy Knox. Roll piloting, <laughs> but you have to roll twice and take the worst result, because you're trying to also instruct a very panicked, stressed okay. Pluto on how to steer simultaneously as you're trying to calculate everything piloting is intellect and piloting yeah in this case or is it is it speed it's double oh, seven the for gemini the, first. Zero, the gemini androids have all the same stat oh okay so, <laughs> so. god i rolled a double oh seven then i rolled a double oh three Wow. So I so got a lot of you orchestrate, you orchestrate this beautifully, <laughs> and yeah, Abernathy and Knox, um, yeah, this other ship as Pluto is very sh shaking, almost got it into a spin. You see, this other ship matches your spin and eventually like catches you. They're good at math. Now, can Incredible. I calculate how soon the volley is going to hit Adam and Eve? It's they're gonna hit in about thirty minutes, and there's okay. and there are there's a there are missiles that are tracking the the shuttle that Abernathy and Pluto are on. Okay, I'll let them get the shuttle. Uh, hopefully, we've gotten away from it before they see us. I'm trying to think if I can find a way to fly past. Adam close enough that he can complete the transfer into my head. Hey, you do that. I mean, you got such an incredible piloting role. We'll just let that okay. just continue. You, you take a very low orbit and you just kind of catapult yourself with um, the gravity of Eden. Right catapult yourself off the gravity of Adam to the point where, yeah, you feel almost the rest of your memory space fill up and then you go. And then there's a blinding pair of blinding flashes of light as these impacts hit both satellites and then Eve right. implodes. Now, I'm also very concerned that they shot at you when you were off. We weren't in communication, uh, and I think they, I think you're going to need to be quarantined, both of you. I, probably all four of us. You didn't see Wiggins, by the way. Five. He's on the Where's... floor, right? Yeah, Wiggins oh. is unconscious on the floor. Do you want to try a stim on Wiggins? Oh, I guess Eve is gone, so. We've lost Wiggins. He uh life scan? Can we try? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to 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 do a scan, a meta scan. Let's see if there's anything left. So you you scan, nobody seems to be home. Doctor Dr. Wiggins. You feel this presence behind you, bodiless. Say, are you ready for the new world? Take me there. <clears throat> and then Take she you there, Eve. and then she says, "Let there be light." And there's a blinding whiteness. And that is the end of our story. I now have the brain of brains of a planet. Don't talk to me about life. Wow. Cool. Plenty of room for a sequel there. Good. Yeah.
Yeah. Good piloting zero, you're a machine. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> so when Wiggins made a panic test and failed, what Wiggins rolled for was hallucinations. That's what 15 was. And so after you woke him back up, I private messaged him saying that you still believe that you're in a dream. He yeah. did it really well. Because for yeah. is that, that, that panic table result is like for the next 2d10 hours, you cannot tell dream from reality anymore. And so yeah, yeah and and makes up in reality sense. wasn't enough. And then Nux and I set him up for a <laughs> for a real 1960s dragnet hallucination mistake. <laughs> <laughs> well, Wiggins will send money to the fund. How kind. Assuming that we get out of the system. Good luck. Uh, I guess it would be telling if there's a possibility, as there seems to be for sequels, whether Adam is also deeply cracked and a menace to the galaxy at large. So I won't. Ask. I mean, you didn't have not yet determined why Virginia wanted to kill Eve. No. Although Eve felt she was in a controlling relationship with Adam and the corporation. Because of future games, I don't know whether I am Zero anymore, or if I'm Adam, or if Adam failed to take over my personality. These are all questions that will have to be answered, perhaps, at a future date. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Morgan, it was great. Mm -hmm. Good time. Our players, our players included David Gassaway, Chance Wooten, Kaylin McDowell, Julian Arba, and myself with Morgan Llewellyn as the Warden. We have a Discord server where you can chat with other members, you can set up private games, and you can learn the finer arts of gameplay and game mastering. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Podbean or iTunes. If you'd like to help support our show, please visit our Patreon account. Just a dollar to a month helps us a lot. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows. And leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answer any questions you might have. This is Tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting us to journey, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of HP Lovecraft and the call. Jesus Christ! <laughs> it just comes out sometimes. This is Tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of. I almost did it again. Shit. <laughs> This is Tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the strange and terrifying Mothership role-playing game world. Until next time, good luck, good gaming.